It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Back in 2006, Richard Dawkins released a book that was called The God Delusion. And within the book, he actually had a chart of the various type of beliefs when it comes down to theistic beliefs. Number one is like strong theism. A person knows that there is like, you know, a God and believes that there is a God. And seven is like a strong atheist, a person who knows that there is no God and doesn't believe in a God. And of course, according to the chart, I'm actually a six by the logic of Richard Dawkins. There's something really similar when it comes down to the issue of transgender people, because I feel as though that sometimes when we have dialogue, there's not necessarily clear what people are when it comes down to this particular issue. And so hopefully by using this chart, I'll tell everybody in this video watching this what kind of position I have. This image right here is the Wilkins scale. For number one is the TRA. Trans women are women. There is no meaningful difference. I use female pronouns for trans women because trans women are women. Exclusion of trans women from women's spaces, sports, and services is transphobic and denies the human rights of trans women. Number two is the handyman. And trans women and cis women are both women. I will use female pronouns for trans women. I strongly believe exclusion of trans women from women's sports, spaces, services is discriminatory because they are women. Number three is the useful idiot. Trans women were assigned male at birth but identify as women. I will use women pronouns for trans women to support them. I think exclusion of trans women from women's spaces, sports, and services is unfair as they be treated as women. Number four is the agnostic. Trans women are trans women. I will use their preferred pronouns. I'm not sure that exclusion of trans women from women's spaces, sports, and services is appropriate. I think providing mixed or gender neutral alternative may be a su suitable compromise. Number five is the skeptic. Trans women are males who identify as women. I will use female pronouns for trans women to be polite or when required to. I think exclusion of trans women from the women's sports, spaces, and services is fair and circumstances where sex is relevant. Number six is the realist. Trans women are biologically male. I avoid using gender pronouns for trans women where I can. I believe exclusion of all males, including trans women from women's sports, spaces, and services is necessary due to the immutable binary nature of human sex. And number seven is the turf. Trans women are men. There is no meaningful difference. I use male pronouns for them. Exclusion of all males from female spaces, sports, and services is essential for fairness, safety, and protection of women and children. I reject the claim that humans can be born in the wrong body or can change sex. Based upon this chart, I consider myself to be a five. I think the positions for one to three are incredibly naive, and I do think that the position for six and seven is way too militant. I will use the personal pronouns of transgender individuals, and I have no type of issues whatsoever using them. Although I will be accommodating and use the appropriate pronouns for transgender individuals, I absolutely, however, refuse to use pronouns that come directly from Tumblr. And so the pronouns for the transgender individuals is he, him, or she, her, I don't mind using them, but for the rest of the pronouns, I'm not going to use them at all. I absolutely refuse to use them. Also, in my mindset, there's a clear difference between a legit transgender person and a transgender. A legit transgender person will be someone like Blair White, a person that actually go out their way to transition from X to Y. Meanwhile, for the case of a transgender, they do it for clicks and money and fame, and I don't think such people are actually legit when it comes down to being transgender. Additionally, when it comes down to women's sports, I feel as though that they actually have an unfair advantage in sports because of the actions of the transgender individuals within the sports. Well, great shape. She's solid, she's tough, and she's ready to go. She doesn't want Fallon taking home that $20,000. Good throws and reversals by both fighters. These girls are getting right into it. Fox delivering oh, the knees and oh. that's it. Fallon Fox 
Holy cow! Oh. Game over. Wow. And a quick finish to our first, our first women's twenty thousand dollar championship tournament fight. The winner by knockout, Alan Quinsworth. Oh. Sport is all about pushing boundaries, and that's certainly what Laurel Hubbard will be doing at the Tokyo Olympics. She will be the first transgender athlete to compete at the Games. She has satisfied domestic and international criteria. She was competing in men's events until she transitioned in 2012, and uh, she's had a pretty decorated career for New Zealand. Back in 2017, she won a silver medal at the World Championships. She thought her career was over at the Commonwealth Games a year later in 2018 when she broke her arm, um, but she's back to full fitness and back in the squad. And New Zealand Olympic officials are very cognizant of the fact that uh, gender identity, in their words, is a very sensitive and complex issue in sport. Kyle Gabinelli. I think having transgender individuals in women's sports teams and magazine covers for Women of the Year is having an adverse effect when it comes down to biological women because they waited for like a long time to get equal rights and be treated as equals. And it's all being erased thanks to these kind of things. And so I think a compromise is to have a transgender Woman of the Year magazine cover, as well as a separate team for transgender individuals to partake in sports. But um, what do you guys think about that chart? Tell me in the comment section down below. Like, what number are you on for that graph? And I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend I wouldn't trade him for another black friend Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler